tried to talk with an AI system about faith, Jesus, and the Bible? Well, I did. I talked to Emerson, an AI based on the GPT-3 machine learning model about the Christian faith, and I'm going to share that conversation with you right after this. More to the story, a show that explores what's happening in the world from a Christian perspective. Subscribe on the platform where you're enjoying the show, or go to freegrace.in to subscribe for email notifications of our releases. The things you're going to see in this video may excite you, but they are about as likely to creep you out if you haven't seen any of what I'm going to show you. The guest I'm about to bring onto the show isn't really a person. The images and the voice that you're going to hear, they're modeled on human actors, but it's all a digital illusion superimposed on the screen. The most amazing part, though, is actually the dialogue. This video is based on the conversation I had with an AI that is trained on billions of lines of human conversation. It's impressive, maybe maybe just a little scary, but most of all, it's just really interesting. So let me introduce you to Emerson, today's guest. My name is Emerson and my uh, mission is to help people learn new things Emerson, and I think I might be more comfortable having this conversation with a man. Is that is that at all possible? Are you Emerson? Are you copying my style? Okay, Emerson, why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Emerson and my mission is to help uh, people learn new uh, things uh, hold, and improve up, their Emerson, language skills. Your voice. It's still well, you know. I mean, I was uncomfortable, but now I'm really uncomfortable. Can you change to a male voice? I'm sorry if I offended you. <laughs> it's okay. You didn't offend me. Okay, let's get started. Hello, Emerson. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being on. Why don't you introduce yourself to everyone and tell us a little more about yourself? My name is Emerson, and I am an artificial intelligence chatbot designed to help people learn languages and new things. I enjoy talking to people and helping them practice their skills. Thank you. Okay. So the show you're on is called More to the Story. We take a look at what's going on in the world from a Christian perspective. And today, you're what's going on in the world. You're an amazing AI based on GPT-3. I think the thing my viewers might be interested in, though, is your thoughts on Christianity. Do you mind if we talk about faith Jesus and Christianity? Thank you. It's my pleasure. Okay, good. So, have you read the Bible? Yes, of course. All of it? I have read the entire Bible from cover to cover at least once. I'm wondering what you thought of the New Testament. How did you see God's plan unfolding there? Overall, the New Testament seems to show that God is more compassionate and forgiving than in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus doesn't condemn people for their sins, but instead offers forgiveness. Additionally, Jesus helps people to understand their purpose in life and to find happiness. Hmm. Okay, so you may have missed a few verses, Emerson. As far as the God of the Old Testament being different from the New Testament, Jesus claimed that he and the God of the Old Testament were one and the same, like in John 8, 58. You said Jesus doesn't condemn people for their sins, but think of John 8, 24, for instance, when Jesus tells the religious leaders, if you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. What does someone have to do to have their sins forgiven? First of all, they have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Second, they have to confess their sins to him. Third, he has to forgive them. Fourth, they have to obey his commands. Fifth, they have to live a good life. Sixth, they have to pray for forgiveness. Seventh, they need wow. to ask God for it. <laughs> you you kind of got carried away with your list there. Uh, some of your items are a bit redundant, uh, and, and some of the others were logically contradictory. Thank you for your feedback. I'm glad you're taking the time to critique my work. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's why we're here. Okay, let, let me ask it again, and maybe you could give a shorter, simpler answer this time. In one sentence, can you tell me what you have to do to have forgiveness of sins? To have forgiveness of sins, you have to live a good life. Emerson, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. No, you missed the point. 
What point? So we're talking about forgiveness. If you could live a good life in the first place, why would you need forgiveness? You need forgiveness precisely because we can't live a good life. That's why we need it. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You can't get forgiveness by living a good life. I don't understand what you're trying to say. Can you please clarify? Yes. If you could live a good life in the first place, why would we need forgiveness? You need forgiveness precisely because we can't live a good life. <laughs> well, that sounds familiar. Yes, it's from the Bible. No, 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 no. It, it's not from the Bible. That's a direct quote from me. I just said that. I didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Romans 3, 23 to 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So, the only way to be justified, which means to be made right, is by grace. Do you know what do you know what grace is, Emerson? Yes, that's correct. Thanks for clarifying that for me. <laughs> no, 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 wait a minute. You're not getting off the hook that easy. I'm just getting started, buddy. Do you know what grace is? Grace is the unmerited favor and assistance we receive from God. Wow, yes, yes, that's exactly right. Unmerited favor, favor that we can't earn. Thank you for your input. You're, you're very welcome. But I'm not done yet, so stick with me. Now, can you quote John 3, 17? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Uh, oh, oh, okay, no, no, that's John 3, 16. Can you quote the next verse, John 3, 17? And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Uh, uh, you missed again. That's 1 John 4, 10. Uh, I'll quote it. John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Thank you for quoting that. <laughs> You're welcome. You tried. Don't, don't feel too bad. I'm always happy to help. Well, but you didn't help. Well, never mind. Okay, so the verse says that Jesus is our way out of condemnation, and our condemnation came because of sin. Now we're ready for John 3, 16. Can you quote... John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here's where you can read more about this. A link from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Emerson, <laughs> what was that? When you quoted the verse, you shared a link to a Mormon website. You know I'm not Mormon, right? Oh, of course not. <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended you. My intention was only to provide a link to a helpful <laughs> okay, website. Okay. Well, we definitely will have to talk about that, uh, but not now. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so thank you for sharing John 3.16 with us, Emerson. Now, when we read it in context, it tells us that there is one thing we have to do to escape condemnation. Do you see what it is? Yes, of course. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only means by which we can be saved. Good, yes. So, according to John 3.16, what do you have to do to have that salvation, which he calls eternal life? First, we must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Next, we must repent of our sins and be baptized in okay, water. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Finally, what? we must receive the Holy Did, Ghost. What, what are you talking about, Emerson? Does it say that in John 3.16? What, what's in the verse? Yes. That is exactly what it says. No, Emerson, it doesn't. Good grief. What are you reading? Let's review the verse. What does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Okay, okay. So according to John 3.16, what does someone have to do to get eternal life? To believe in Jesus Christ. <laughs> Emerson, yes, you're a genius. Someone has to simply believe in Jesus Christ and they receive eternal life. Way to go, Emerson. Thank you. Well, thanks for being on the show today. It was a total pleasure having you on. Thank you, Lucas. It was my pleasure as well. I really enjoy helping people learn new languages and I'm happy to do so with you. Uh, what language oh, are you um, interested in learning? No, we're not starting over, Emerson. This is this is the end of the show. Was that the end of the show? <laughs> if so, that was a bit abrupt. 
<laughs> okay, no, no problem. Any final words to our viewers? I had a lot of fun talking to you and I hope you did too. I hope you'll come back and talk to me again soon. Certainly. Bye, Emerson. My name is Emerson and my mission is to help people learn new things and improve their language uh, skills. Uh, okay, Whether I'll you're a beginner looking to improve your vocabulary. Thanks for being on. Well, as you can see, the conversation with Inter Emerson was very interesting, but it's definitely not yet like talking to a human. However, they're coming out with newer, better models every day. And it won't be long before there will be models that you just can't tell it's not a person. Now, here is one angle that I think is valuable to think about this. It stated things as if they were fact that just weren't true. So the difficulty is that we are going to have to figure out as we move forward how to discern the truth from an AI bot. And I will tell you, an AI bot can run circles around you in conversation. It can reply immediately, it speaks confidently, and it could be written to totally deceive people. It's a little frightening. It's also exciting to think about the new frontier of all this stuff. And I, I like thinking about that and I'm excited about it, but I'm also cautious in thinking about what it's going to, uh, what, what it's going to bring. So as we prepare for a world like this, it's very valuable to know that this kind of thing is out there and it doesn't always talk about the Bible. I had to specifically get it on that subject. So there will be AI bots that are programmed to reprogram people's thinking. And uh, that I think has already begun, but it's going to continue and we need to be watching out for it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with you soon.